I wanted to make a coat rack that was both elegant and functional. This strip of walnut really fit the bill. So today, let's build a modern spot for jackets and hats to mingle. I started by milling some 8 quarter walnut. It was too wide for my jointer, so I hot glued some shims to a piece of plywood to make a sled for the planer. From there, I ran the piece through the planer until the top was flat. I then popped it off the sled to run it through the planer again with the flattened side down. This ensures both faces are parallel to one another. With both faces flat and parallel, I brought it over to the jointer to square the edge. Referencing the jointed edge to the fence, I ripped the board at two and a half inches. I then took the board back over to the planer and planed it down to one and a half inches. I then ripped the board to its final thickness of two and three eighths. Next it was time to swap the ripping blade for a cross cut blade. Using the correct blade for the type of cut you're making greatly reduces tear out and cuts down on sanding time later on. Using a crosscut sled, I squared off one end. Then I could mark the location for the final length. I always mark the waist side of my line to ensure I don't cut into my workpiece. With the crosscut sled all set up, I cut the final length. Next, I laid out and marked the location for the dowel holes. These need to be done now for the holes to be square. Order of operations is critical in builds. I always try to plan my cuts ahead of time so I don't run into snags during the build. With the hole placement laid out, I used my drill press and a brad point bit to drill the holes. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It helps me reach more viewers like you. Using a T-square, I laid out the dado cut. At the table saw, I set the dado depth. Then used a feather board to keep the workpiece flush to the fence while I cut in the data. I did this in three passes, only moving the fence once for the third cleanout cut. Let me know in the comments below if you prefer a data stack or a router for cutting datos. I switched back to my ripping blade with the dado cuts done and tilted it to 75 degrees. With the dado face down, I ripped the bevel along the edge of the piece. You can see now why I drilled the holes before making this cut. With the first cut complete, I flipped the piece around and cut the bevel along the other side. I designed this piece with an angle along the back. To make it, I taped the off cuts from the bevels onto the workpiece and built a sled. This allows for the taper to be square and gradual.
The result is one piece with compound bevels that allow for some real visual weight. This also allows jackets to hang more staggered once mounted. If you want to see some more compound cuts, check out the step stool build linked in the card above. Next, I could get started on the hangers. I have this piece of walnut left over from the same board as the frame. On the crosscut sled, I squared off the edges. Then I took the block over to the bandsaw and cut a taper along its length. Using a tinning jig at the table saw, I cut an angle for the hanger to tilt flush on when extended. Then I set up a stop block on my crosscut sled. I cut the hangers to be the exact width of the earlier cut data. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support. With all the hangers cut, I marked the dowel location with an awl and drilled them in at the drill press. I then test fit each hanger to ensure they sat flush with the face of the frame. Next, it was time to make some dowels. I cut a strip of walnut just over the dowel hole size. I then chucked the piece into my drill and rounded off the edges. I used a dowel making jig to cut the dowels to their final diameter. With the dowels cut, I again checked for a snug fit and made sure the hangers functioned correctly before gluing them in. I used some spray adhesive to attach a sanding dose to a plywood board. Then I sanded the hangers, breaking the edges on the back side only. I then clamped the frame down and sanded away the cut marks left in the dado from the table saw. I used Walrus Oil's furniture finish to finish this piece. Since getting to the hangers and dado later would be difficult, I applied finish to them prior to gluing in the dowels. I let the finish dry for about 12 hours, then glued in the dowels, only applying glue to the outside hole, then the dowel just before I pushed it in. Once the glue was set, I used a flush trim saw to cut away the excess. and then sanded the dowels flush with a sanding block. Then I did a quick pass with the orbital sander around the frame. Then I added my mark. I then finished the rest of the piece with the walrus oil. 
If you'd like to purchase any of the tools or products I've used in this video, you can find a full list in the description below. And just know I would never link anything that I wouldn't use myself. To mount the rack to the wall, I use these locking wall hangers made to support a heavy load. One piece mounts to the frame and the other mounts to the wall. With the frame hanger secure, I drilled one screw into a stud and used an anchor for the other. I noticed that the hangers had some play in them, so I stuck a few furniture pads to the back of the frame for more rigidity. Then all that was left was to hang the coat rack and test out the hangers. I really love the way this turned out. The walnut has a great warmth to it that fits well with the coat rack, and the angles look subtle but purposeful. The hangers work great too, and the flip down motion makes them hide away well when not in use. I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I did. I make new videos all the time, so subscribe to stay up to date. I have a bunch of other great build videos out there as well, so check them out. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you next time.